We got some flex in there now. So you can see here some. Okay, so we're going to take some solder. There we go. I think I'm getting good at soldering. I just started doing it uh, just recently with the wire work here. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to heat the, you want to heat it a little bit. See that get the get the get sort of like the metal cooking with the flex. Heat the area. Be careful because again things will expand and then wires might actually come loose due to the heat. Okay. Now you got to heat it. A lot of people have a special clamp they use to actually hold the two wires together. I'm not going to be able to do that. So what I'm going to do is try to solder it uh, in a way where, let me see if I can get it stand. Let's see something here will stand. Okay, well I could probably do it this way. Just purely on the ground. Okay, so here we go. Careful not to get your tip touched there. And I should close my flex here. We don't need it anymore. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I want to get a closer angle for you. So I can bring the camera much closer down. These are great. This little uh, tripod here with the leg. You can see his leg, actually. <laughs> We're not trying to solder the leg. <laughs> Okay, here we go. All right, so here we go. You want to get the tip and the solder together. And sometimes it doesn't heat right away, but it'll get there. Now, you don't want to just have it drip and fall down. You want to make sure it actually... See there? See there? That's, that's a cold solder right now because it's just bulking on there. You see how the flex attracts? See, that's a cold solder still. There we go. There we go. Now it's heating. What I'm doing is heating the wires up and having the solder actually just sip through. It's like it's attracting because of the flex. It's good that if you have a good soldering um, heat, a little bit more better. This one is just, okay, this is enough right here. What I'm going to do is just fix this right here, the solder work, so I can hold it better. Okay, so you can see here I'm going for the solder to come the other way. We want to bring it to the wire more. Because cold solder might even make it worse or won't have good contact. Okay, let me go ahead and try to get an angle where I can actually solder at the same time show you. So I was burning the plastic a little bit. Yeah, solder's not melting. Yeah, it's not a good soldering gun, this one. Or else it should melt it by now. But it'll do. It's gonna get heated. Oh, you can't you can't see it if I do it that. I feel the wire heating up now, but the soldering's not heating up. Yeah, well. yeah, there we go. I do it on camera here, you can see it. Yeah, the wire's taking a lot of heat here now. You don't want to overheat the wire because you don't want to damage it. 
You just want to get the soldering on there. See, it's, it's got a clunk of coal soldering I'm trying to get rid of. All right. This is not a good soldering example, by the way. <laughs> okay, so let me... Let me try to clean the tip up a little bit. No. Nope. You don't want to smell solder fume too long. <laughs> All right. Did we just get a piece of hair in there as well? Okay, here we go. That might have cooled it down a little further. But yeah, if you had a good, sorry. If you had a good soldering gun, this should have been a little bit more easier for you. But I don't want to just blame on the gun, it's my experience as well. So. Do your best you can. If you can't solder like me, <laughs> just try to get a little bit on there. And this just helps it from yanking forward. But a good solder will actually even secure it to the mount, like this right here. This little piece looks like it's secured a little bit here. And then also make continuity, but... Okay, let's try the other side here. Alright, there's another fresh one here. We're gonna go ahead and apply some solder. And we're supposed to just actually just go on there and just, you know, feed the wires, get it to solder. It took less than maybe two seconds. This one's taking almost like 20 minutes or two minutes. <laughs> there we go, see how the solder is? There we go. See if we can get the flex to attract. There we go. See, so, yeah. it's the, what the flex does. It is like it cooks it in there. Okay, let me add some more solder to this. <laughs> yep. See that there? That's a cold solder still. You want to flatten it out, even though it looks nice and it looks like it's contacting, but it's not. You want to make sure we're trying to go for. There's one side of the, I believe, the the heat where you, you spin it. Some of them actually are as hotter on one side than the other ones. Okay, so that's the best we could do on the soldering here, for me anyway. You could probably do way better than this. Way, way better. <laughs> thousand percent better. But I'm going to go ahead and just heat shrink it and cover up my uh, disaster work here. But the main idea is to make sure you have a good, secure uh, clamp for sure. Because the soldering alone, it's not going to secure it. So you want to make sure you clamp it really nicely and well. There we go. So, so this is what you'll have. Um, a little bit nicer soldering work, of course. But you can try to tug it, and it won't tug. 
Now you want, before you try to tug it right away when it's still heat, you want to make sure because again, metal expands or aluminum and you don't want to actually just yank everything off. So, so what I do next is um, I take, um, pretty much let's go and rotate where the black ones is. There's two green ones here. Let me push that in, bypass the first black one. Okay, so this green one here uh, won't meet further. Then it's going to hit this right here, so that's fine. Now this one's going to go over and cover that disaster solder work there. Uh, there's a lot of videos on soldering. Don't take my <laughs> don't take my expertise on that. I I believe AM might come up with a, a soldering tutorial, which is definitely needed. See there you go. So it hits that right there. So right there. Try to face it where the, it shows the wiring. It doesn't really matter. I'm just a preference guy and guy. See all the lettering matches. So I'll probably, it doesn't really matter now because it's supposed it's sitting on the side more than anything. Okay, so it's gonna wind up. You can also you want to make sure you, when you wind it, you want to make sure which end how you want it to fold like the belt wise. You can face the same size because the notch here. Because if it's gonna mount like this with the notch, you might want to make sure this one's gonna mount which way you want it so, so you don't have to twist the wire so much. But you can still twist the wires, not like it's not gonna let you. But just for preference, why do you want to be perfect, you know? So anyway, I forgot to do that, but at the same time, it looks okay. It's gonna work. Okay, so I bring this up to here. You can see here I can only go so far uh, with the green one, the green uh, wire um, shrink. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this over here like this. I actually don't put it too far. Maybe I should cover a little bit more. It's just your preference. You can cover the whole thing. If you look at all my other ones here, I didn't cover the whole thing. I only cover up to where the um, plastic is. So in this case scenario, I'll try to cover the whole thing. We don't want to see that soldering work. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go ahead and try to cover it much as we can. We want the metal to expose. So that's why I don't want to cover the whole thing much. So I'll, I'll cover it to like right here. Okay. And this I'm going to fire it up. Be careful. If there's anything around you that can flame, look out for that. Shrink it. If you want to shrink it a little bit better, just make sure you turn it. Don't, don't try to focus the heat on one area because you might burn that one before it actually, you know, finish shrinking all the rest. There we go. Nice. Then you want to check for continuity too to make sure there's no wire that got burned and damaged during the process of uh, trying to solder like I did. Okay, so you can see here, it's kind of nice shrink, right? All right. And let's then check out this one here, this side, same way. It's going to meet up right there, push the rest of the black one because it can go further. Cover that ugly soldering work. Okay, here we go. There we go, that should be good enough. Okay, make sure this goes all the way. Voila. What soldering work, right? Go. I'm kind of like playing with this fire. I almost feel like I'm camping. There we go. Make sure it's nice and shrink. You only get one time to, you can go back and do it, but I prefer to have it shrink now. Okay, once you start seeing a little bit roasty or smell, you might want to stop there. Okay, so we're going to check out to make sure there's a good contact still. So how we do that is pretty simple. You know, kind of hook up to a ground here, right? You got, we got a ground strap here, right? And then we'll take our voltmeter and see if we get the same reading of the, the battery voltage here. So let's go see where the battery's at right now. Be careful with this again. Make sure you put your soldering tool somewhere where you don't walk on it because that's how I burned one of my shoes. Okay, so it's still here under uh, repair. I'm not sure it's sticking to repair or not. So let's try to see if we can move it. Maybe it's not repairable, but the voltage is 2.5 still. Yeah, I'm not sure this uh, the battery is repairable because it's not giving me options to go back. I was trying to see if I can get to just charge that. I'm holding it down, nothing's happening. 
it's still fluctuating. Yep. It's still fluctuating, so maybe it'll do something for me on this battery. But in any case, we're not really planning to keep it. We're going to probably discard it. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out our thing here for testing for continuity. You can do it just with an ohm meter too, by the way. You don't have to go get ground, so let's go ahead and go. We're going to select ohms. Okay, this just stands for open uh, line or open load, whatever you want to call it. That means it's just not connecting together. So when it does have a contact, like for instance, let's say if I just make a contact to the other lead on my same test multimeter, you can see here, it shows a little bit reading, a little bit of resistance on the wire. So what we're gonna do is you can do the same thing here. And it's probably easier if I clamp it. That way you can see. Okay, we're gonna go ahead take a reading from one end. Doesn't matter, one end can be positive, one end can be negative. We can pull this out. Okay, and let's look at the other end of the wire. Yeah, we wanna make sure our wire has not, you know, any damage in between before we install it. So you can see here, it does show that it has, well, let me see if my other end is connected. Yeah, the other end is connected to, well, there you go, the black one right there. You can see here, it's not an open line. That's a good thing, because it's sewing. So, but now what we're gonna do is, another way to test it is see if we can actually use it as a ground line. So we're gonna go ahead and hook our positive, our positive into the battery terminal. And then, we're gonna ground this one here. We're gonna just kinda put on the little, you know, bolt here. Okay. Gonna put on the bolt here. And we're gonna, we're gonna take our negative, and if it reads the voltage, we're gonna go ahead and see if it actually reads uh, 13 voltage, okay? So here we go, 13 or high 12s. There you go. Yep, it did read it, so it's a good line. 12.67 volts, and so this is the ground here we're gonna use. And we're gonna go ahead and tap it from here, and we're gonna run it all the way back over here again. Now before we do run it over here, again, I wanna make sure I uh, file this, so I'm gonna take this off. This is probably gonna be your 10 millimeter uh, wrench again. Now, I'm not going to bolt it yet because it actually attaches to the housing, a plastic housing. Um, I believe so, but you definitely don't want, I think plastic uh, metal housing. But you don't want to run too much of your ground into a plastic housing, but we're looking forward to having it ground to this plate, so that's more important here. So what we're going to do is file this really good. So you can take your filing tool here. And let's so we get this out of the way or stick away from it so it won't get damaged. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and file it right there. So we wanna get all this paint off here because this is where it's gonna make contact for our ground. It should be easy to file. You can just go back and forth. You can see how it's starting to come out now. You know, that paint, you want a, a pretty much a good silver just around that area. We really don't care to really file this, but unfortunately I only have a small file or a big file here, so I have to do what I can. See that? I'm just trying to go for this one right here. And you want to file evenly so it makes contact. So we're, we're going for the silver look here. See that silver? That's actually the raw uh, metal of the scooter frame. Keep following that one. Until you see it around the area. See, we want to make sure we get a little bit more here because we got plenty here on the top as well on the side, so. You can tilt your filer a little bit downward if you want. Try to get that silver, silver lining there. See, it's coming. Now you don't want to file all too much around because again, 
when you file the paint off, it's going to be subject to a lot of rust. So you don't want to, you don't want to actually have it exposed too much. You just want the area really, preferably, just a round area where it to make ground. So it looks pretty good, but I think just a little bit. Sorry, it looks pretty good, just a little bit more. You can see here it's coming. The paint, it'll probably go through the paint a little bit of its thin, but we want to make sure it has a good contact. Nice, there we go. It's almost there. Again, it's just enough for the ring, so remember how our ring's gonna be. Take it off of this. You want to make sure you use a small ring enough for the bolts. You don't want it too big. Okay, so you look at it. See that right there? It's going to be enough for the ring to make contact probably this way. It's just depending. If the, if the other uh, plastic housing is going to cover it. See that right there? You want to make sure anything that the ring is there, you want to have exposed. So even down here a little bit more and right here a little bit more. We're going to go ahead and keep following it. This is the purpose of just getting a good ground throughout our scooter chassis. It's almost the entire uh, block now. Okay, now it's it's pretty good. Mm, there we go. See that? It's almost an entire block that we got all out. So we really want to just get bare metal. Especially the lower area here where it's gonna drop down. Let me make sure that gets exposed. Definitely don't want water to uh you know make contact in this area right now because again it's gonna rust it has no coating protection okay that's good enough and then what you want to do is actually get some brake cleaner and clean it so let me go and get some brake cleaner and we'll get that cleaned out there we go okay we got some brake cleaner here and we're gonna go ahead and clean it you want to get a little uh, shop uh, towel, paper towel, wipe it afterwards. Spray cleaner here. Again, it's really harsh stuff, so be careful on your hands. It's gonna dry it out. If you have an open wound or anything like that, you see how it dries out my finger there. Really, let's give it a good spray on there. And in fact, what I like to do is spray it and then put a towel around it. That way, I'll capture some of it and use it for the bolts. I got, you want to clean the bolts too with some uh, brake cleaner. Try to scrape off of the paint as well. A little bit off the bolts. Just the threading. Because the threading is what dries and make contact. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a spray. Put my thing underneath it or behind it or wherever. See there? That's good enough. Okay. Give it a good scrub there maybe you want to focus on that see that right there that's good a little bit more there's the bolts here we're gonna go and give it a good spray on the bolts put some cleaner fluid on there Get the bolts out. You want to spray it on a cloth that way you can actually use it. Most of it just goes away. So in this case, we can just there you go. You don't want any dirt or debris because it's going to help you. But mainly is that back plate that's going to really help you on the metal contact of it. So I guess what we could do is actually mount this one first loosely uh, because we can't really secure it tightly yet until we actually um, 
until we actually put the plastic frame on top. And the plastic frame has a metal piece that goes behind it as well to give it a little bit more back support. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. Probably can, we can loop it. Uh, we can, no, we can. I think the best way to do it is just find out, this is our soldering in. So we could probably just go for like this right here. Right, or even come from the side, but I think the side one might be yeah, the metal frame looks like it's so long. I think you, it's perfectly centered on that block. So no matter how we do it, it's going to force a little bit. Yeah, no matter how we do it. Right there. So we'll just go from the bottom right now. Okay, I chose green color because it's a good color for ground. You know, you're gonna have some negative tied into it as well because it's still going to the negative battery. Those are usually black wires, but mainly all your solid green colors on your wiring harness could just run to any ground of the metal of the bike if you have it properly ground like we have here. So we're gonna go ahead, just keep it loose in there because it still needs to be actually uh, tightened with um with the frame and stuff on there. So it's it's on there nice and loosely, but the ground is ready. And we're gonna try to see if we can, uh, we can't, well, we could probably use this right here, the rusty dusty. Okay, that won't actually cover all the hole. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and route it here. Sometimes you can actually almost squeeze it in here, see if I can, because sometimes there's just a loop that's perfect. There you go, look, I'm pushing it. But I think there's one thing that's holding me. <laughs> it's actually going through almost. There we go. Nice. You can see here, I told you we're gonna have some slack anyway, even though we cut it and we messed up on the cable a little bit. Um, see, we still have enough slack here to bring it down and actually secure it on the other side. So let's do that right now. So we're gonna need our 10 millimeter socket, which just kind of took a roll there. Again, you're gonna need some brake cleaner to clean out that exposed wire. Okay, we're gonna take back our rectifier off. This is really tight in there. Lefty Lucy still. Okay, this is gonna be, I'm gonna need both hands to get in there and actually hold the rectifier while screwing this one back on. Because there's another ground wire in there too. I have to align both of them. There you go. You can see that. So it's going to be a little harder. I'm going to set this down. Put the camera here. So that we can see me work on that ground. You can see that ground? Both of them? Okay, good. You can see the sky too, huh? Let me go if I can get a lighter resolution here. Alright. Okay, so what I want to do is meet these two wires, or it's supposed to meet here. And we're gonna go ahead and junction them here. I need to flex this a little bit more the way I, I need to for it to come in and out. Because I believe this, oh, there we go. I'm gonna scoot it back from the, thick, uh, thick wire here. Let's see if I can pull it. Okay. Yeah, I'll probably have to uh, probably take this wire harness off. Let me go and cut this uh, tie strap off here. And then we'll just put a new thicker tie strap after we're done. So I'm gonna cut it with the, I'm gonna cut it with the, um, oh wow, with the high gauge cutter, that worked perfect. Okay, so we'll cut it off. We'll join it again. This thing is thick. Got, got that cut off with the cable. Okay. Going to route this nicely. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, we're going to meet these two right here. Then we're going to bring we're going to bring the bolts. Okay, let's find out where there the bolts. Okay, so we you can see here how I already scraped it off. I'm not sure you can see it's probably pitch black to you, but yeah, you can see a little bit. So that I use the file or two as well on there because you want to make a really good in connection. Okay, I'm gonna come back from behind. Okay, we're gonna put the bolts through both of these first. This one's already flexing for you. And then we're gonna put the bolts in to this one as well. See how it joins right there? And then we're gonna go ahead and make sure we feel the groove. And then we're gonna secure it. Take our 10 millimeter, we're gonna hand tighten first so we don't cross thread anything. Seems like it's going through. Okay. I think it's going through. Can't see from the other end, so. All right, so it's not going through yet. Let me lift this one up. Let's see if I can get a better bite. There we go, I think it's going through now. All right, so now I can probably show you here. It's going through the threads. So you can see here, we have this lifted up here like this a little bit. We don't want to get crunched too much. This one's lifted fine. And before I tighten it uh, fully, I want to check the, uh, the alignment on the bottom to it because I want the holes to align just in case I ever need to put a bolt in that hole there. Oh, dude, it was cross-threading actually. Came right loose. So let's do it again. Yeah, it was cross-threading. Okay, so when it's cross threading like that, you gotta do it by hand first. This came loose right away. Mm -hmm. Try to do it by one hand here. Put the socket in there. I get a feel for it first. Oh, we're not even seeing it. Yeah, you don't want to cross thread it. Yeah, the screw is also very short. So we might need to put a longer screw in there. Let's see, let's see if I can get a longer screw. This might work. I just need to actually make sure it, it takes better with two hands. So let me focus back on two hands here. You guys can see it? Or just the fill of it? 